The shelves are a little bit of a work in progress right now, as you can see. Oh fuck, well that's fine. I apologize for the lighting. Um, it's after 4 p.m. and it's dark and hopefully I'll be able to take out the green tint and editing. Hello, I didn't expect to see you again so soon. I know you only click on my rant reviews or my negative videos, but I have a rant review already for you, so let's go ahead and just dive in, shall we? So this video was supposed to be a smutty vlog, and that is not what occurred. It was basically me trying to force myself through this book, well, forcing myself through this book. So this is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I vlogged most of my experience reading this, which you will see shortly, and then I will sum up my thoughts after you watch those clips. So without further ado, let's get into Maddie reading From Blood and Ash. But I wanted to chat real fast before I go to work about From Blood and Ash. So this is by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Everyone and their mother has been talking about this book all over the place. So I ordered it because I was like, I need some fantasy smut in my life. Why not? So I am a total of... Who knows, 236 pages into this big bitch. Um, I have some thoughts already. Um, I feel like everyone was talking about this, as I said, but um, no one was really talking about what happens in it. This is about a fantasy world where the main character has to stay veiled and she is the chosen maiden and she needs to be pure. And um, the first 50 pages, she meets the love interest and he kisses her without consent and then does not get off of her after he puts her on a bed. So that's where you're getting yourself into immediately with this book. And on top of that, there's major abuse warnings because she's basically being controlled by this duke and lord and they pretty regularly physically abuse her. And I don't remember anyone telling me about that. So that's something you need to know before going into this book because yikes. That's no, that's not fun. Um, but I am very interested to see where else this is going to go because after I checked up on the Goodreads reviews, I can see a lot of people didn't actually like this. So I want to talk about it. Like, I think this is going to be something fun that we can chat about. Hi. So we're actually at my work. There's a fan that blows in the back. So you're just going to have to ignore that. And I want to just update y'all about From Blood and Ash. This book is um, kind of a mess. The world building makes no sense, and pretty repeatedly, uh, the main character is told not to do something, and then she just does it. And sometimes there's ter types of characters like that that I'm like, oh yeah, she's doing it because she's sassy or whatever. But this, I'm just like, you're dumb. Like, that's, you're putting yourself in grave danger. You're putting other people in grave danger. Okay. Um, and then every single interaction with the lead, he goes against everything she asks him to do. Like, he invades her personal space. He just, yeah, just, it's, yeah, like, personal space, no bueno, like, fuck. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much my update right now. That I've gotten to 291 pages so far. Um, and I honestly just feel like if y'all are so desperate for, like, some bad boy freaking fantasy, I'm willing to write that shit because every time I read one of these books, I'm like, can can you can you ask to kiss her first, please? Why why is that so complicated? Like, I get the fact that there's like a fantasy about fantasy, but um, I don't feel like <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I'll have a more put together update later for you. Hopefully, maybe we'll see. Hello. It's currently Monday at like 5.30 or something like that. Also, I have a TikTok now, so if you guys want to follow me, follow me. I am very bad at them so far, so just understand that we're, we all can't be perfect. Um, waiting on my tea, and I'm still reading this. Didn't get any of that this done at all today. Um, still on 393 pages. I'm hoping that I could probably finish this tonight because I am not in the mental state to address the fact that my apartment is a bloody nightmare. It is disgusting in here. And I don't think that I should have to deal with it right now, which is most of the time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my tea and I'm gonna go sit down. I'm gonna read 
And yeah, that's pretty much all that's gonna happen here. Oh yeah, look, I got a little Christmas tree back there. So, there's a smutty scene in this book. A, the word honeydew should not be used in a smut scene. B, someone's first time for anything sexual should not be out in the open where other people can, like, see them. And C, there's no consent in this book. Not once, not even a singular time. Has the love interest asked, is this okay? Can I do this? And then after this scene is over, there's a line that says, and I thought that it wasn't entirely fair that he'd given me this while I gave him nothing of the sort. So we're really telling young girls, because you bet your ass that teenagers are still reading this, even if it's new adult, that your first time you still should feel guilty for not getting the man off. I am, I'm livid right now. This book, this book is a, a whole ass trip. And my, like other shit has happened and I'm, I'm feeling like this is going to have to turn into a rant review because what the absolute bullshit is this book? Like, I feel like some people have been like, it's not that great. But like this one, like this bitch What about not asking for consent to se sexy? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I have so much to unpack with this, and I still have like a hundred pages left. Like more than a hundred pages, like 150. I'm finishing this book tonight because otherwise I'm gonna be pissed for longer. So there's that. Is this, like, a really aggressive shot? Yeah, probably it is, but you're just gonna have to deal. Say, so, I'll see you in the next update. Bye. I have been trying to find all of the possible things to do tonight that isn't read this fucking book. Like, I am now 481 pages in, um, and it is about to get steamy, and I am refusing to read that's weird for me. I like smuts and I don't want to read this. The man is like, oh, I can't, I can't spend the night with you because I don't know my limitations. And I'm just like, did you just say that you're going to rape her? But like sexy? Like, no. No. Ugh. But yeah. So I talked to a coworker for a little bit. I've been on TikTok. I made a TikTok. It was just ranting about this book. <sighs> yeah, so um, I'm gonna try and finish this book tonight and I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I really want it to happen so I don't have to continue reading it. That doesn't make any sense, but I'll catch you in the next update, bye. Hello, it's the next morning. Ooh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm using my lesbian TikTok voice. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I was not successful. Ooh, there's shit back there. So I wasn't successful. I still have like 100 pages, but all of my like opinions of the character, the love interest, just came to a complete, an immediate turnaround. And yeah, so that's, this, this vlog is just going to be me being like, oh, okay, so we're going to, we're going to, be mad about romance again. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna finish this bitch today because it's not like I have that much and then I'm gonna start notating and I'm probably gonna read something else to like clear my eyebrows. Eyebrows? Eyeballs. Well, there you have it, everyone. I need to drink more coffee. Goodbye. And now that you're back, I am here to tell you my sum up of thoughts about this book. This was a Goodreads choice winner for romance. And 
Not a single time is there a instance of consent in this book. Now, I know that I've grown a lot as a reader over the years. I've definitely internalized a lot of things that are in this book when I was a teenager, dealt with people that didn't ask for consent in my everyday life, and now I realize what I want in a person and it's not this so to speak. I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing when people find this shit attractive. I just find that it's a little strange that we keep repeating this same type of premise and uh, tropes repeatedly in romance because they're, it's not cute to me, basically. I'll give a sum up of what this book is about. Uh, this is about a girl named Poppy. She is a maiden. The world building is very scant and not very clear, um, but she's very sheltered. She is supposed to wear a veil wherever she goes, and she's a very protected figure. Um, but does Poppy listen to anyone? No. No, she doesn't. She does things that gets her into so much shit, and she just does it because she fucking wants to, um, even though it could get her and people she loves killed. She has these fancy sensing emotion powers that people tell her not to use and then immediately tell her to use them and she just uses them, like City of Dumb Bitch Resident 1. Uh, I thought Pharaoh was annoying or Alina from Shadow and Bone, but boy, Poppy is top level fucking stupid. So she's in this casino slash brothel hybrid in the beginning of the book. For what reason? No fucking clue. And Victor, her like father figure, who is definitely my favorite character in the entire book, not because I have issues, I don't know what you're talking about, um, basically comes in because he has a fling who's there, but we never go back to that particular topic. Um, so she has to go upstairs to this room that's totally empty, and she meets this guy. And this guy is like, oh, hello. And so he picks her up, puts her on the bed, and starts making out with her. Not asking consent, by the way. So she's just like, oh, okay, I got hormones. Let's make out. And then he's like, hey, you're not the person I thought you were. She's wearing a mask, by the way. But he's like, he can tell because like he knows exactly the way people kiss. Um, and she's like, yeah, I'm not. Can you get off me now? And he's like, no. And then licks her nipple. Sir, you don't know who you're kissing. Could you maybe slow it down a notch? I don't know. I didn't find that hot at all. I've heard this book was steamy, but honestly, it just left me gross. Like, I, I don't know. I, it, I just, oh, ugh. So he's like, stay here. And she's like, no. And so she goes back to the palace or castle or wherever she lives, basically. Um, and she just kind of dicks off. And that's when we find out that there's this duke in play who basically physically abuses Poppy, even though she's like a religious figure of some sort. Uh, but apparently she can be physically abused and it's just like in a passing comment and then we get like an actual very descriptive scene of her being caned and wow not what I was expecting. Sexual abuse and fantasy towards women is a epidemic and I really don't like seeing it represented in all forms of media that is geared like targeted at young women i'm tired of seeing it can we move on please so there's some yada yada about this dark one this like evil dude um i wonder who it could be um and then there's more yada yada she has a best friend who is the only dark skin character to my knowledge named tawny who gets written out of the story quite quickly after she becomes pals with Hawk for some reason. The book is also aggressively straight. I don't think there is a single queer character in the entire book. Like if you guys just want fan fiction of the Darkling and Reese from Akamath, like I can write that and make it gay. Like mm, just let me know. Let me know if you guys want that. So Hawk is this like super sexy guard dude, right? So this is the, the guy that she made out with and she already knows who he is, which I'm like, okay. Um, so he takes the her personal bodyguard spot after her personal bodyguard dies, just inter gets introduced and then dies. I wonder who that could have 
could have been. Um, and so he takes that spot and then basically aggressively forces her into this relationship and there's shit happening. Um, but you can really sum this book up in like three sentences. Sheltered special chosen girl meets boy who's definitely sus, who forces her into a sexual relationship even though it goes against her morals and might get them both killed. They go on some road trip after things kind of get screwed up and then they sleep together. Then she immediately finds out that he's actually the imposter and then he's like oh I do like you I'm just a shitty person and she's like okay that's the whole book and the sex scenes are not anything to write home about like the first scene he's like fingering her in public like there's people around and when she gets off she be she feels bad that she didn't return the favor because that's something we should be condoning as a, a thing we should be telling people to feel bad about. And then the second one, they have sex and then she immediately finds out that he betrayed her um, or is the bad guy uh, and has known who she is this entire time and intentionally seduced her. It's not as bad as keeping the bloody sheets, but it's pretty darn close. And then number three, she stabs him in the chest and then they have sex in the snow. And I don't know about you guys, but like sex in the snow just doesn't sound ideal, much less after I stabbed a bitch. Like, I don't know. I don't know. If you couldn't tell, this was an inebriated drunk review. I just want, like, a romance between a brooding old knight and a young ingenue. Or, like, a fanfic between Elaine and Moore from A Court of Mist and Fury. Is that a ship? Do people ship them? Because I don't really like Elaine, but, like, Moore deserves happiness. So, like, let me know if you want that. So, yeah. Um, happy holidays, guys. Fuck 2020. Um... Be kind to each other and leave a skull in the comments if you got this far. Bye!